story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Call TV News on the Hour. I am Frank on Malape. If it was coming out of the presidency uh, anything to go by, President Golok Jonathan will on Friday visit Bruno State, uh, one of the centers of violence being orchestrated by the Boko Haram set. This is coming 30 days after the Chibok school girls were abducted from the government secondary school. The president will use the opportunity of the trip to the state currently under emergency rule to visit Chiba, where over 200 school girls were kidnapped on April 14. The visit is coming more than a month after the kidnap that has attracted global attention. Call TV News learned that members of the president's advance team had left Abuja for the troubled state. The president will use the opportunity of the visit to see for himself the carnage done by the set members at the school and hear for witnesses. The wide in a related issue, Jonathan will travel to Paris, France on Friday to participate in a summit convened by President François Hollande to discuss fresh strategies for dealing with the security threats posed by Boko Haram and other terrorist groups in Western Central Africa. According to a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ruben Abati. The president will be joined at the summit by heads of state and government of Benin Republic, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad. The statement reads, it is also expected that Britain, the United States of America, and the European Union will be represented at the talks which will give special attention to the coordination and intensification of efforts to curtail the destabilizing activities of Boko Haram in Nigeria and neighboring countries in the wake of the recent abduction of schoolgirls. President Jonathan Wu will be accompanied by the Minister of Defense, Ali Uguso, the National Security Advisor, Sambo Dasuki, as well as other principal aides and advisors, will return to Abuja at the conclusion of the summit on Friday. The House of Representatives has approved the request by President Gulag Jonathan to extend emergency rule in Borono, Yobe, and Adama State by another six months. The decision came through a majority voice uh, vote shortly after a closed door meeting between the lawmakers and service chiefs. Jonathan had forwarded the request for the extension of the emergency rule to the National Assembly on Chiefs Day. The Speaker, Aminu Tambua, explains that the meeting focused on the, on the current security situation in the state and the progress made so far to secure the release of the adopted school girls. The Chairman House Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Zakar Mohammed, later confirmed at the news conference that the service chiefs were able to convince lawmakers to extend the emergency period. The All Progressive uh, Congress has urged the federal government to immediately stop the discordant tunes emanating from the highest echelons of government and speak with one voice on issues concerning the ongoing effort to find and rescue the schoolgirls abducted by Boko Haram. In a statement issued in Abuja by its interim national publicity secretary, Lai Mohammed, the party says the conflicting statement credited to top government officials over the conditions given by Boko Haram for releasing the girls were totally unwarranted. The party added could send the wrong signal to the insurgents and hinder the effort to ensure the safe return of the girls. The opposition party wants the federal government to designate a spokesman to be responsible for a daily relaying to public any relevant information concerning the search for the missing girls. 
Authorities of the Nigerian Army has reacted to the miniature of some soldiers of the Division 7 of the Nigerian Army by insinuating a high-powered delegation to investigate the occurrence at the headquarters of the division at May Malari Maidugere. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Kenneth Minima, approved the immediate removal of the General Officer commanding the 7th Infantry Division, Major General Abu Bakar Mohammed. The Army authorities have appointed Brigadier General by Ibrahim as the replacement for Abu Bakar, who was removed because of the deep resentment against him among the incensed soldiers and some of their colleagues. The Director of Defense Information, Major General Chris Olukolade, confirmed the removal of Mohammed and his replacement with Brigadier General Ibrahim. You're watching Core TV News. We take a short break now. We'll be back right after this timeout. Join us again. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. If you're just joining us, you're watching Call TV News on the hour. For more information on our news and other programs, visit us on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Call TV News. You can also follow us on Twitter at Call TV News NG. Also on YouTube, www.youtube.com forward slash Call TV Space News. Now to the rest of the story, the immediate past General Officer Commanding 7th Infantry Division of the Nigerian Army, Maiduguri Abu Bakar Mohammed, escaped the close of that by the whiskers when soldiers under his command staged a shooting protest, what they describe as the continuous culling of troops in the mission area by insurgents due to the deceit and betrayal from their leadership. The soldiers reportedly shot at everything in sight, including the official vehicle, of the GOC. Public analyst Balazaka and political analyst Olabode Osenye said corruption in the Nigerian military sector is assuming a dangerous trend. Somi Ojo has more in this report presented from our studios. When the governor of Boronu State, Kashim Shatima, accused the military of complicity in some of the insurgent attacks that have been taking place in the state, a statement drew the eye of many who believe that such statement is uncomplimentary of the Nigerian military who are doing so much to curb terror attacks in the northeast region. However, a recent confessional statement by military personnel that some in the forefront of the war against terrorism are Boko Haram apologists. Impressed in the consciousness of all that the Nigerian army may not after all be completely free of aiding the incessant insurgent attacks in the northeast. Bala Zaka, a public analyst, and Olabode Hosseini expressed the need for the government to conduct a comprehensive investigation of the leadership of the military. So what is basically happening today is not the fact that budgets have not been made. It's not the fact that appropriation or allocations have not been made, but the management and the implementations of the funds deployed have always been a suspect. 
and that's why there seems to be division within the security agencies in Nigeria, not just the military. The, the government needs to uh, address many issues. Uh, they need to put their house in order. Because, uh, as we said on the program, it's going to the point that the whole world is uh, making mockery of us. They're laughing at us. And why are they laughing at us? Because they think we're not doing what we're supposed to do. If Boko Haram is getting the information on which network, is it on, is it on uh, a network uh, that is not from this country? Are they getting their information when to move, when to assembly, when to attack, when not, not to attack? These are the things we need to ask ourselves. The folder noted that the disagreements within the military is proof that the Borano state governor was right when he said the military was ill-equipped to fight this insurgency. It is clear that to a reasonable extent, the terrorists have stronger firepower compared to the Nigerian military. So the question we need to just ask now is this. Does it mean the military was being underfunded? All the necessary funds were being diverted. There is no uh, gain denying the fact that uh, we don't have a united and an integrated army as we used to have maybe 20 years, 30, 40 years ago. We have a situation where um, soldiers that are supposed to defend the uh, properties and lives are not equipped. If the ordinary soldier can get to a point of complaining that they are not well equipped. So I think uh, everything needs to be investigated, needs to be checked, whether what they are saying is right or not. But I can imagine, not speaking for them, that they are right. Because, uh, I mean, the, the look of things on, in the country, I'm visiting and I've seen so many things happening here. Uh, people, uh, lives means nothing to Others, the, the roads are bad, uh, there's no light, there's no Medicare, housing, schools are all neglected. So if the neglect has now gotten to a point of where the, uh, the defense of the country is now being, uh, being bashed, then we have a big problems in our hand. The alleged mutiny was said to have been triggered by the arrival of the bodies of 10 soldiers who were ambushed and killed by suspected members of the violent sect. This latest shooting at the GOC convoy in Maiduguri has added another spill to the Nigerian army uncoordinated fights against insurgency. And outside in Nigeria now, U.S. President Barack Obama hailed the love and sacrifice he said was the true spirit of September 11 as he inaugurated a survey in Ground Zero Mizun about Al-Qaeda attacks which killed nearly 3,000 people. Obama says the museum situated in the footprint of the former World Trade Center Twin Towers would ensure that the horror and heroism of September 11, 2001 will never be forgotten by future generations. The museum has 10,000 artifacts and provides an emotionally bracing experience likely to revive terrible memories of the attacks. To all those who responded with such courage, on behalf of Michelle and myself and the American people, uh, it is an honor for us to join in your memories, to recall and to reflect but above all, to reaffirm the true spirit of 9-11. Love, compassion, sacrifice, and to enshrine it forever in the heart of our nation. It to be a profound and moving experience. I want to express our deep gratitude to everybody who was involved in this great undertaking, for bringing us to this day, for giving us this sacred place of healing and of hope. Nothing can change who we are as Americans. I was one of the last of the 25 people to come out of the South Tower. My number is 18. <coughs> I had taken my shoes off on the 60th floor and I walked in my stockings the rest of the way. After that, I still walked in my stocking feet 
50 more blocks to get to a friend's office, barely in one piece. Now be our package at this hour. Many thanks for watching. Join us at Top of the Hour for more news stories. I am Franco Malape. Good morning.